Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Lots to talk about here with mountain weather and ski conditions. A number of big ticket items, in fact, with the storm cycle continue. You can see my headlines here. We've got the atmospheric river pattern that is going to be uh, hitting tonight in California, and then that's going to produce a rich flow into the interior. Uh, to some other resorts that will be beneficiaries of this atmospheric river downstream, which is outstanding. I mean, the bottom line is we are in for some big totals all the way into the weekend. So let's first start out. Those are my headlines. Let's move into the live cam. This is where we're going to set the stage for where we're headed here. Beautiful day. I mean, look at those blue skies in uh, Tahoe right now. The view from Heavenly. Uh, I've been up there myself at almost that exact location, and I just that, that view across... Lake Tahoe is just spectacular. Well, it's the calm before the storm. That area is going to get slammed as we head into the weekend. So let's uh, let's jump into the uh, the analysis here. Radar satellite. All right. So where is the action? Well, we have a low pressure that is spinning down in the desert southwest near the Four Corners. That is rolling out of Arizona, where it was wintry, even at the low the low elevations of the deserts. And that's going to roll up through Colorado. You can see the shield of snow being pushed up towards Denver, and that will then get wrapped around and then snow, I don't know, lightly, one to four inches up there, up around Loveland and Winter Park and the A Basin. And so you'll have some new powder to ski up there tomorrow. I mean, it's not huge, but it's something. And then you've got the break across the west, the calm before the storm. I showed you that over Tahoe, and here's this low. And the thing, it's not just always about the low but it's, it's, it's being coddled, right? It's being guided and ushered, and the whole thing is going to come south by the, with the power of the jet stream and all that wind energy. So what is the atmospheric river? I talked about this yesterday. Maybe, you know, if you're curious about some of the details on what it is, you can go back and watch that in yesterday's video. But just, um, just sort of a shorthand, what we're going to do is take a very focused, narrow area of enhanced moisture in the atmosphere. This is precipitable water. You can see the green plume right here extending, reaching all the way back into the Pacific near Hawaii, the Pineapple Express. Maybe you've heard that term before, but we're going to focus that like a fire hose into California, and we're going to slam it into the Sierra. We often call this in our line of work uh, vertically integrated vapor transport. And it's where you focus that enhanced area that matters. And a lot of the time, California is the beneficiary of this. And that's exactly what's going to happen. It's about a 72-hour event right now. Uh, and we're going to lay down some very serious amounts of snow in that short amount of time. So let's look at the jet stream. As we move into the future here, and we'll start, you can see the current pattern. But where the jet stream ends up in time, that's what ultimately matters. And so what will happen is that low moves in. And look at the power of the jet here. This is by Wednesday night. And you see the red shading over the top of uh, the Sierra and the angle of the jet basically perpendicular to um, the Wasatch right there, or the, um, the Sierra. And then it actually goes inland into the interior, into the Wasatch, into the Tetons. That aspect of it taking the moisture and then taking that rich flow and guiding it inland will be a very important piece of the extended forecast. But that is the jet stream. That's how it will shake out and guide this atmospheric river pattern as we kind of work our way into the future. Now, as we kind of roll through the rest of the week, this is Saturday in the morning. Notice it's a wide open jet. So all of that energy is now translating across the west. And the actual low is sitting somewhere over Colorado at this point. But we've endured days, hours uh, of heavy moisture and forced content over the top of Wasatch, of the Wasatch, and also the Tetons. So all of that becomes important in the forecast. So the future radar, as we kind of work our way ahead here, this is Wednesday in the morning. Look at all of that heavy precip running down the spine of the Sierra. And on top of that, I just wanted to say, I talked about this yesterday, but all the heaviest snow is going to be above 7,000 feet. That's where your best odds are of seeing the heaviest totals. In fact, if you can go higher, the better with this. The other issue will be the wind. Because of the jet, I showed you that 150 to 200 mile an hour pink core on the jet there, that streak. We're going to probably have blizzard conditions up over the, uh, the ridge tops. So we're going to have 100 mile an hour winds over a lot of those favored areas in the Sierra. So this is a pretty serious event out there with blizzard warnings in effect. Now this illustrates what I was talking about with that rich transport of moisture 
into the west. You see what's happening? It's overrunning. The jet's just taking that moisture off the Pacific, slamming it against the Tetons and even the Wasatch for that matter. I would say we're looking at big totals in Sun Valley, Jackson Hole, Grand Targhee, maybe even Big Sky, and potentially into the Wasatch. I don't think it's a lock yet for the Wasatch, but it could happen. Uh, starting basically Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe even into Sunday across those areas. It's going to be a very good stretch of powder. I mean, you can see how the blue just kind of lingers across Sun Valley and in the Tetons all the way into Friday. We're still laying down heavy moisture in the Tetons, although that low will then begin to move into the interior after that and roll through uh, Utah and Colorado, and there it is. By the time we get to Saturday morning, we're still talking snow across the Tetons and and even into the Wasatch at that point, look at the snow rolling into Colorado. And yeah, there's another low moving in from the west at that point into California. So the pattern just continues. You know, if we start talking about accumulations, watch the numbers uh, tick up here as we go into Wednesday morning. A little bit of new powder in Colorado to ski by Wednesday, but watch the numbers in California. I mean, we're working on a foot right there, and then all of a sudden we're up to two, three, four feet by Thursday morning. Um, obviously, that, 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 that's the power of the atmospheric river. We'll also watch Sun Valley, watch Jackson Hole. Those numbers are all going to increase very quickly as we slide into uh, Friday morning. Look at those numbers out in the, uh, the Sierra. Look at Sun Valley, look at Jackson Hole. Even the Wasatch numbers are all going up at that point. And then we'll end this forecast on Saturday. Watch the numbers go up. I mean, look at Jackson, we're indicating about 20 inches here uh, through that period and probably a good foot over the top of the Wasatch at that point. We start to add some snow accumulation in to southwest and western Colorado as well. Um, so again, the, the, the west really a beneficiary of that atmospheric river pattern. And we saw this a couple of winters ago. We had two or three back-to-back -back atmospheric rivers in, Cal in California. The, the, it doesn't just stop there. That moisture can get transported inland and become a major factor. You know, zooming in on the uh, the Tahoe area, grand totals by Friday. I mean, we're talking 40 to 70 to 80 inches of snow across uh, the Tahoe region, along with those very strong winds. And even Reno getting in on the action right there with potentially two feet of snow. I mean, this is going to be a big one for that area. And I want to back up towards Jackson Hole because of that rich flow through Sun Valley coming right over the top of the Tetons. I showed you 20 inches there potentially by Saturday, but it could be a lot more. I mean, that could be a conservative number. I mean, we could be talking about numbers that go off the charts here working on, I don't know, 25, 30, 35 inches of snow as we kind of work our way. You can see the plume right there. It's off the chart by the time we get into Sunday. So some really good uh, snow ahead here. And I'll keep things updated here. Always appreciate you tuning in. Have a good day.